question from Tim Healy, our radio voice. Hi, Josh. I'm Tim. I'm the radio play-by-play -play broadcaster. Looking forward to calling your games. And uh, uh, just thought we'd start by uh, getting a sense from you how practices have gone over the last month and also your thoughts on the possibility of playing possibly the number two and number three ranked teams in the country in the first two games of your season next week at Mohegan Sun and how you feel the team is ready for that kind of challenge? Uh, well, I mean, first things, practice has been going great. Uh, you know, Coach Hurley's putting in a lot of new stuff. It's like we're short notice, so you kind of have to be locked into everything because we don't have a lot of time. So uh, just being able to really lock in and get everything down, um, especially for a guy like me, I think I could play on like both sides of the court. So, you know, knowing all the positions I can on the court. And uh, it's a lot of talent on the court. So, you know, practice is fun. You know, it's intense. You know, guys are going at it. We're just competing and challenging each other. And I think stuff like that is going to prepare us for when we go play uh, the potential number one team in the country. But, I mean, this is why we're here. Uh, this is why I came here. Like, you know, a lot of times schools get, like, early preseason games and they might play a mid-major or a low-major to get started. No, let's go ahead and see what we're made of off the rip. So, I think that's uh, going to be real fun for us. Jordan Spurgeon, up next. Hey, Josh. Uh, I'm Jordan from Sports 360 AZ and a few other uh, ASU student organizations. Too many to name right now. Right. Um, thanks for taking the time today. I wanted to ask you, um, what has Remy Martin been like during practice? What, what have his leadership skills been like for you over the last few weeks? Uh, he's just a vet. Uh, he leads by example pretty well, you know. Um, <laughs> He's able to pick it up if something, you know, is not going. Pick it up for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, if practice is a little slow, he's been able to elevate it, uh, knocks down shots. Like, he's just he's, – he's your veteran point guard. That's what he is. Next up, we'll go Chris Cartman and then Trevor Booth. Josh, uh, Chris Cartman, son of a source. Bobby Hurley mentioned recently that uh, you said to him that um, he wasn't coaching you hard enough. Mm -hmm. Can you give some perspective on that and how you see it? Uh, when I first committed uh, April 13th, I had told him like, yo, like, you know, I'm coming here. I want you to push me. Like uh, at high school, the ball was kind of like just rolled out to me. Shout out to my coach Davis though. That's my guy. He just uh, retired from Maker this year. so. Shout out to him. But um, yeah, like he let me kind of rock out. So I think this year I was looking for maybe a little more of a challenge. So I, you know, I told Coach Hurley today I committed uh, just to push me as hard as you can, whatever you got, empty it. I mean, the man got paid to play basketball. Like he's been on the court with, with legends. Like he's one of those guys. So if I could pick his brain as much as possible, you know, you know, that's why I came here. Just guard you. I'm a guard. So if I can get um, as much as possible from him, then, you know, then I, I need it. Has he, has he picked it up since uh, you told him that? Yeah, we had like a scrimmage of the day and he got on me. And I think that was his first time he really like yelled at me. And in my head, I was like, whoa, what's going on? And then I was like, oh yeah, this is what I asked for. So it was cool though. I know how to, you know, stay composed. I'm not really too emotional when it comes to that stuff. I know that these coaches get like that because they want to help us and see us be great. So it's all love. Go uh, Trevor Booth, and then Doug Holler, then Michelle Gardner. Hey, Josh. Trevor Booth, also with Sun Devil Source. Um, Coach Hurley has been high on the development of Jalen Graham this offseason in terms of his weight gain and skills. I know you weren't here last year, um, but how has he meshed with you and the backcourt guys, and then also Pablo and Chris? Yeah, them guys are, are the core. They're going to be the ones that are uh, holding it down inside. Um, I think – they're doing pretty good on the defensive end for sure. They're, I mean, they're big, so they take up a lot of space. So for guys like me, when I get in the paint, it's crowded. So I guess that's pretty good. Uh, and then, um, yeah, JG has been you know, doing really good hitting jumpers. He plays really good in the pick and roll, whether he catches it or he rolls. You know, he just does a good job of making uh, the guard's job a lot easier with his size and his athleticism. Go, so, uh, Doug Holler, Michelle Gardner. Mike Caratanudo. Josh, Doug Holler. Uh, I cover the team for The Athletic. Um, you're wearing number 13 this year, which is a pretty uh, significant number in the program. What, what's your attachment to number 13? And also, I think you tweeted at one point that you got permission from James Harden. 
Uh, can you just tell us how that went down and whether or not you have a relationship with James? Oh man, 13 is, you know, that that's just who I am. I'm 13 and my brother's three. And uh, 133, that's a Bible verse. It's Psalms 133, it's how beautiful, how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell in unity. So my brother wears three here. So I think it was like just important for me to wear my 13 just so me. I mean, my brother could, you know, match a little bit how we used to. So uh, that was important to me. So I asked them and, you know, they, I, I got to go. So that's all that is. Michelle and then Mike. Well, Doug Holler stole my question, so we'll, we'll go to another question. Uh, I'm Michelle Gardner. I'm from the Arizona Republic newspaper, Josh. Uh, what is it going to be like for you to play with your brother this year? It's, it's almost a dream come true. I remember, like, my last game of my sophomore year after we lost in high school, I was like, man, I'm never going to get to play with Caleb again. And then we ended up playing that summer together, and then that was the end of it. So just, man, I mean, I watched my brother really grind to get where he's at, like really grind. A lot of people, you know, don't, you know, see or pay attention, but that boy really worked his tail off. And, uh, I mean, I live with him again, man. I, when he went, he went to Arizona, did Hillcrest, and then he's been at ASU. Like, my brother's my best friend. Like, that's my dog. Like, like <laughs> that's my guy. So, uh, you know, to be able to share the same roof with him again has been a great thing. Mike, and then Hode Rubino. Yeah, Josh, uh, Michael Caratinuto with uh, Believe in the Pac-12 Basketball. So you talked about, obviously, Remy's leadership, but what has it been like meshing with all the other guards? I mean, I know, uh, obviously, how practice got started. How you guys had to ease into things, Coach, really talking about. But how do you feel you've uh, you've meshed with them? Uh, talent on the court. And when there's people that know how to play the game of basketball, you know how to utilize that talent. So. Uh, like me, me and Zoe talk a lot. We were just like, never know. On this team, it could be anybody's night. So it's just, man, get a ball to the high hand. That's, I mean, I feel like that's all it can come down to. It could be anybody's night. So you know, we're cooking on that night. It could be all of us. But as long as guys make the right plays and knock down shots, it's going to be a pretty unstoppable team. Go Hode and then Zach and then Carson. Hey, Josh, Hold Rubino, Devil's Digest. I know uh, a lot of fans have been asking me, um, there's only one basketball to go around between Remy Martin, Zoe Verge, Josh Christopher, Marcus Bagley. To just talk about the sharing of the basketball in practice. Uh, I mean, is it really maybe much easier than people think thinks that, thinks that it is? Uh, or is it maybe just a uh, little of a struggle sometimes because everybody wants to get um, theirs at the end of the day? Man, that basketball will make its way from one corner to the other back to the other, I promise you. Of course, there's guys that can go get their own bucket, and we understand that. So when a guy goes and gets his own bucket, it's okay. Like, it's a whole lot of talent. I think in our scrimmage the other day, I, I, uh, I had like a spurt where I struggled a little bit, but then it's like, I'm not scoring the basketball. I could be dishing off to somebody else. So it honestly is going to help all of us show what we can do and show that we can do a variety of things, which is, I mean, what basketball is about. You know, we could all be multidimensional on the court. Zach, go ahead, then Carson, and then Richard Sines. Hey, Josh. Uh, Zach Keenan. I also work for DevilsDigest.com. Taking back to April 13th, I remember, like, group chats going crazy, text from he's coming to ASU, he's going to ASU. Who were, who were some of the people that, that you told in advance of that day and releasing that video? Oh, actually, no, I told my teammates, my coaches, of course, my family knew. Like, but my family knew, like, before, during the whole process, when I was just breaking it down, talking to my brothers, my dad, uh, when I was just going over all my options, they were like, it seems you already have your mind made up. But I, I just still want to make the best decision for myself, taking all the factors. And then I, met, I set that 413 date just to put some pressure on myself, like, dude, make a decision already. Like, like, what are you going to do? Like, come on now. So, uh, yeah, man, that was a fun day. The 13 was a great day. Richard Sines, did I miss anybody? You're next, I think. Yeah, uh, Josh, Richard Sines here with Fox 10. I just wanted to, you know, ask you, uh, a lot has been made about the, the number of weapons on this team and how that could be an issue because there's only one basketball. But could actually 
that be a plus for you because teams can't just focus on you and try to stop you and you've got more weapons around you that could kind of alleviate the pressure, so to speak? I will say Devin Booker averaged eight points while he was at Kentucky. So the ball is going to make its way around. Like I said, it's a long season regardless of how many games we play. It's a long season. So, I mean, you just, I mean, it's just, it's just basketball. Basketball's art. You make it work. Whatever you have, you take that and you make it work. Uh, it's a lot of talent on the team. And like I said, if you know, all guys got to do is make the right play. Hit the open man. You're cooking. Keep cooking. You're not. Hit the next man. That's all it is. That's what basketball is. Let's go uh, Carson, uh, Brebert, and then Jacob Rudner, and then Shane Diefenbach. Hey, Josh. Carson Brebert with the State Press. What's it been like for you having Marcus out there motivating each other as two freshmen? We've heard – Bobby rave about Marcus and how good he's been, but what's it been like having that sort of competitive environment with you two? I love that guy. Honestly, uh, it's fun to be on the court with him. Every day after practice, we're getting up shots. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just two freshmen, like, I won't hit the corner for, to start my threes after practice unless Marcus is there. We're like, yo, we shooting? That, that's just our thing. So, um, well, diaper dandies, man. I think we're the best freshman duo in the country. I don't see nobody better. Um, not that I really watch, but just based on what I see in practice from me and him, I think we're a good little freshman for us. Jacob Rudner, followed by Shane Diefenbach, followed by Doug Holler. Hey, Josh, my name is Jacob Rudner from Sun Devil Source. And, and just to kind of build off of that, did you think that there was a, a positive, maybe negative pressure that came with you and, and Marcus being the top rated high school duo that ASU has ever signed. Did, what, what kind of pressure did that put on the two of you to perform? No, I, just, I, don't, I don't really believe in the whole pressure thing. This is, I, I live for this kind of stuff. If I was worried about pressure, I wouldn't have asked to wear number 13 because it was hanging in the rafters or something like that. Um, but no, this is why I'm here. Like, this, this is exactly why I came here. All the whole pressure stuff. This stuff's all fun to me. Like, pressure's been a part of me all my life, but pressure makes diamonds, so I just got to play basketball. Shane Diefenbach, Doug Holler, and then Gabe Schwartz. What's going on, Josh? Shane Diefenbach, Cronkite News. I just want to know if you could speak on the transition from Mayfair and California coming to Tempe, you know, what you like, what you don't like, what you missed back home. Um, see, I like to keep my emotions out of a lot of stuff. So I could be up here and say, man, I miss home. I want to go back so bad. I miss my grandma, but like I signed the papers. So I'm out here now. So it's just time to work. But, uh, I mean, of course I, you know, I think about going back home with Mr. Cali weather. Sometimes it's stupid hot out here, but, uh, now I'm here to play basketball. I'm here to win games. I'm, you know, here to wear my Sun Devil jersey and you know, put on a show, win games and go win a championship. So just got to handle business. Josh, uh, earlier you said that you just felt Bobby, Coach Hurley's wrath uh, not too long ago when he got on you in practice. W what did you do to have him kind of light into you like that? Oh, I think he had blew up some crazy play. He's real good at doing stuff on the fly. So it was a play where I was supposed to come off and I didn't know if it was a handoff or a screen. I had just like messed a play up and he was livid. <laughs> Caleb even told me, he was like, bruh, like, don't do that. And like, you got to lock in. So, um, nah, yeah, that, that's, that was about it. Just, you know, just getting the whole mental thing down. I got to be ready to go. But yeah, no, that was it right there. Hey Josh, this is Gabe Swartz of Devil, Devil's Digest. Um, on the defensive end of the, of the court last year, ASU turned teams over at a super high clip. What do you guys have to do to create that kind of success again defensively? And, and how do you translate your game from the intensity at the high school level to get to high D1 basketball level uh, on the defensive end of the court? Um, shoot, just putting, putting pressure on the basketball. I feel like it's a lot of guards that are interchangeable. So I think as far as defense goes, whatever player on the opposing team we need to go after, we could be interchanging guys on him the whole game. One, one play, Remy gets on him, and then Jalen gets on him, Caleb gets on him, Zoe guards him, I can guard him. Like, just being interchangeable, man. We could really tire teams out the whole game just because of how deep we are. That's how I look at it. 
Chris Cartman, Hode Rubino, and then Jordan. Yeah, Josh, uh, how, how do you look, set up your expectations for this season? Is it, um, you know, I think ASU fans sort of perceive this as the, uh, one of the most talented teams that the, the programs have, but how do you see it and what would you consider to be necessary for it to be a successful season? Um, and we got to hit that court. Everything we do right now in practice is uh, leading up to that. So that's why I think it's good that we go out to Mohegan Sun and we get put to the test right away because uh, what well, they had us at what, 18 on the AP polls. I think we can be way better than that. But it's all a matter of getting on the court and seeing what you're made of, though. But uh, I definitely have a lot of trust in this team just so early. I know a lot of teams haven't had a whole lot of time to practice due to COVID. So I think this season will rely on potentially how much talent a team can have and then some more. You know what I'm saying? This is the, it's going to, you know, we're, we're going to see once the season comes along. You know, you practice and you work, and when the time comes, you know, it's time to go. Let's go, uh, Hode. Jordan, and then Jonathan Gold. Josh, uh, we know there's a good chance that this might be your, your, your only year uh, at Arizona State before you declare for the NBA draft. So with that um, notion in mind, are you really trying to take in this whole college experience? I know it's really weird under COVID-19, but are you just really trying to relish, um, you know, the, 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 the last time you're going to play uh, with, with your brother and just relishing the college experience as a freshman at Arizona State? No, absolutely. That was the like the most important thing for me when it came down to making my decision. Was it to go to college or go get paid? Like my brother's in Arizona, like forget basketball. My brother's in Arizona going to college and I have the opportunity to live with my brother, make more memories with my brother. We can tell our kids about like, you know, it's not often, you know, people get to go to school with their brother or be as close to home. You know, like my dad and my mom, my mom moved to Arizona. My dad is just a drive away. So just to be close to family. And then, I mean, this is guard you. Like, it's not called guard you for a reason. I really realized that once I got here, like, I would tell any guard to come play for Bobby Early. Literally. I mean, of course, guys are going to make their own decisions, but it's guard you for a reason. So, I mean, hey, man, pick your poison. Jordan, John Gold, and then Trevor Booth. Hey, Josh, you mentioned, you know, coming here to make all these memories and now you've got family out here with your brother and your mom. What's it been like for you? How you been holding up during COVID with maybe more limitations on what you would have possibly expected before? Man, everything has been limited except basketball. So honestly, this honestly, during a COVID time, you're going to see who's really been putting it at work because in reality, well, at least for me, gyms have never been closed. I've, I've had access to a gym through this whole time. So I've been trying to take advantage of that as much as possible. And uh, yeah, just putting in work. Like I'm here for a reason. So just work. That's all it is. John Gold and then Trevor Booth and then back to Carson. Hey, thanks so much for your time. Uh, John Gold with the Arizona Daily Star. Um, kind of to piggyback on Jordan's question, what's it been like to, to start your college career in the midst of a pandemic? Uh, have you had that, that real college moment yet? Uh, or, you know, that real welcome to the, the big leagues moment? Is that going to happen when you play uh, other competition? You know, have you had that kind of rude awakening yet? Um, I've never, I won't say I haven't been on the court with so much talent before. Um... Yeah, I mean, we got to hit that court, man. Practice is practice. So I haven't really taken, like, I've looked at each day in practice just, like, as a learning experience, not nothing, like, crazy. Like, if something doesn't go my way, how do we fix it? I'm that type of guy. Like, I'm not really going to, whoa, what just happened? It's like, okay, this happened. How are we going to fix it now? How are we going to get better from that? But, um, no, I think, yeah, I guess the whole welcome to college moment will be, I guess, once we hit that court, you know, once we show everybody what ASU is made of, let's, let, let's make that our welcome to college moment. Trevor Carson, and then Zach Keenan. Hey, Josh, last year, Alonzo Burge mentioned Rob Edwards as a guy who kind of pushed him in practice and elevated his game as his first year with the team went on. I know you talked about Remy and Marcus, but either them or which of your teammates have maybe provided that competition factor or advice that's kind of helped you to this point? Oh, yeah, Alonzo Burge, 100%. When I first got out here, we like, you know, started just competing off the rip. Just two guys that love the game of basketball and 
want to be great, just switch with each other. That's what it, that's what it's all about, man. Iron sharpens iron, man. That's that's what it's all about. Hey, Josh. Um, sorry, I, I forgot what I was going to say there for a second. So obviously, we've seen you do a lot in high school at a high level with your handle, with your shot, athletically. You talked about, you know, you feel what your two way ability is. What do you think is your greatest strength right away? And what do you think is going to be your most sort of immediate contribution to the team? Whatever Coach Hurley asked me to do once it's time to hit that floor, I think that's what I've been pretty good at, just being able to adjust the situations and just making it work. Uh, I think I'm, I've been like just a very good basketball player. I think I'm a good two-way player. So I think when it comes to putting the ball in the basket and making plays or being on the defensive end and getting deflections or blocking shots, I think uh, – I've blocked a, a handful of big guys in my time playing basketball. So I think I'll even be able to get down in there with the bigs and protect the rim. I think that's the most important thing. I think we have a whole lot of guards in the perimeter, but I think if some of us could get down and really help the bigs down inside, because it's three of us on the perimeter, it's two of them. So if it comes down to it, let's try to you know help those bigs as much as possible. Go so Zach, Michelle Gardner, Doug Holler. Josh, one thing that we hear a lot of is uh, we hear Remy, we hear uh, Zoe, we hear Marcus and you. Is is there anyone this year that we should really be looking out for, maybe a breakout player or someone who's flying under the radar? Uh, everybody. Caleb Christopher, Holland Woods, Jalen House, Pablo, Chris Austin is elite. Everybody, man. Expect something from everybody. Uh, everybody has shown that those, you know, those glimpses of greatness. So, um I think that's why this team is really good. I think the depth that we have can really take us uh, very far. Michelle, you're up. Uh, two questions, uh, Josh. One, how is Caleb's injury coming along? And number two, What's it like, you know, in the age of COVID and any worries about maybe this season may not play out as you want and you hope? Oh, one, Caleb is doing great. He just hit the court yesterday. So he's, you know, back live. Uh, he's going to ease his way into it. Uh, man, my guy came in and took a, a huge charge yesterday. That might have been the only charge of the day. So while he, while he eases his way back in, he's definitely going to help us. I think in yesterday's practice, it was uh, – a play where we needed a stop to win. So he got the charge and then we ended up scoring down there. So guys to be able to make plays on both ends, man, we're going to need that little spark plug. So he's, he's that kind of guy. And then um, your other question was about, about COVID and how the season is playing out very strangely. Yeah, you got to control what you can control. As of right now, I know I'll be getting on a plane and going to Connecticut to play basketball. So uh, I don't know what could happen in the, you know these next couple of days until then. But right now, I'm just getting prepared to play ball. That's all I could do. Awesome. Hey, Zach, did, did you get your question in? Yeah, I did. Okay. Doug Hollers next. And then Mike Caratanudo. Josh, what part of your game do you feel like is the most overlooked? I think by the time season comes around, I'll be shooting the ball at a, uh, at a pretty solid clip. I mean, I'm in the gym every day, so I kind of, you know, just seeing my shot getting back to how it was. Um, so, and I think I'll be able to make plays, man. I think I'll be able just to affect the, the game in a, a lot of different ways, however. So, if I'm not the one that's scoring the ball, I'll be able to set the guys up that, that are scoring the ball or be able to just get stops, man, just be able to make plays. Uh, Energy. I think you guys, you guys know what kind of player I am. You know, I feel with uh, energy and, you know, I like to do a lot of fun, crazy stuff when we play. So just those plays that can get us going and then just, you know, just being, a, being a good ball player. That's about it. Mike Caratanudo. And then, Josh, you talked about obviously the depth of your team and how big depth can play out over a season. But with obviously the, uh, the, just uh, what the COVID did for the NBA draft and a lot of players coming back. When you look at the conference in and of itself coming in, I mean, is the, does the overall depth of the conference kind of like light you up competitively and think that you see it and say, this is a, obviously a very deep conference. Yeah, this is what it, this is what it's all about. When my brother played at Cal, I didn't see James Harden play. I saw Isaiah Thomas play Quincy, my brother, Pat, Jerome Randall, Ryan Anderson, all these guys. 
I saw all that on the court. So like, this is I mean I've seen I've seen it all, man. So I'm just ready to play basketball. I've seen it all. And then to follow up real quick, what was it like? I talked to Jerome. What was it like working out with Jerome? Because I mean I know as a point guard he was pretty shifty. But what 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 are some things you learned from Jerome? Hey man, that guy got some stuff. I got a signature move. I think I pulled it out one time during uh, like some runs in quarantine. I only used it once. I haven't used it since then, but it, it's automatic. It's automatic. He has some stuff in his bag. All right. Anybody else have any questions for Josh? Awesome. Hey, man. Thanks, buddy. Tell Jake, Jake thanks for the computer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know, right? It's, mine was right here, but yeah, the Zoom link didn't pop up, but I mean... I'm Jake Sweeney for the day. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Josh. Hey, Josh, thanks, man. It was a pleasure, buddy. We appreciate your time and your energy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, thanks, Josh. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. You got it. You too, Dougie. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Doug.